Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. Picking up where we left off, we will answer the question I posed last time. What happens to the margin of error as the confidence level changes and the sample size changes? Pause here to recall your answer. The margin of error shows how precise we believe our estimate is based on the variability of the estimate. Literally, it is the quantity we add and subtract to our estimate when constructing a confidence interval. Note the estimate I am referring to is the sample mean x bar. Here is the confidence interval formula. The margin of error includes two pieces, the critical value z star and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Let's see what happens to a confidence interval first when the confidence level changes. When changing the level of confidence, we will keep the standard deviation of the sampling distribution sigma over the square root of n constant. This standard normal curve displays the z star values for a 95% confidence interval. Remember, when we began discussing confidence intervals, we first thought about 95% of the sample means that fall within roughly 2 or 1.96 standard deviations from mu. We use this method to produce the z-star values for the 99% confidence interval as well. Pause here to obtain the z-star values for a 90% confidence interval and think about the relationship between the confidence level and the critical value z-star. Did you obtain plus or minus 1.645? Also, did you notice that the confidence level gets smaller as z-star gets smaller? Use these z-star critical values to calculate the 90, 95, and 99% confidence intervals for the weights example. Remember, our sample mean from the first sample of size 30 was 14.55 and we were assuming the population's standard deviation was known to be 5 ounces. Pause here to write down your answers and to consider what is happening to the margin of error. Here are the results. Notice that as the confidence level increases, the margin of error and the width of the confidence interval also increase. Here is an image of those three confidence intervals. This increase should make sense because we are more confident in a wider interval capturing the population mean. However, we need to balance error and precision. We do not want to make our interval too wide because a confidence interval that is too wide is not very useful. Now let's see what happens to the margin of error as we change the sample size and hold the other variables constant. Begin by using the sample mean we obtained from a sample of size 30 from the weights example, x bar equals 14.55. Then change the sample size n from 5 to 15 to 30, assuming we obtained the sample mean of 14.55 from each of these samples. Pause here to calculate three 95% confidence intervals using different sample sizes and consider what is happening to the margin of error as the sample size increases. Here are the results. Notice that as the sample size n increases, the margin of error and the width of the confidence interval decrease. Here is the graph displaying the three confidence intervals with the various sample sizes. We can reduce the margin of error of the confidence interval without giving up any confidence in our interval capturing mu by taking a larger sample. Now we are ready to think deeper about the interpretation of a confidence interval. Please pause here to write down your interpretation of the 95% confidence interval for the mean height of adult males in Virginia example that was introduced in video 4. The data from that example are shown here. Remember, the confidence interval was 67.48 to 69.52. To better understand the correct interpretation of a confidence interval, it is helpful to read through incorrect interpretations and attempt to determine the reason or reasons why these interpretations are incorrect. These interpretations will use the 95% confidence interval we constructed for the heights of adult males in the state of Virginia. Pause after each of these interpretations and try to determine the reason they are incorrect. The first one reads, I am 95% confident that my sample mean of 68.5 inches is between 67.48 and 69.52 inches. 
This interpretation is unnecessary because one builds the confidence interval with the sample statistic value. The sample mean is always between the bounds of the confidence interval, so technically we are 100% confident. The second one says, the population mean height falls between 67.48 and 69.52 inches. This interpretation suggests certainty or knowledge about the population mean. However, we know the population mean is unknown. The third incorrect interpretation is, I am 95% confident that the heights of all adult men in Virginia fell between 67.48 and 69.52 inches. This interpretation is incorrect because our confidence interval is built around a sample mean. We know that the heights of all adult men in Virginia vary more than two inches, and therefore we cannot use this interval to make inferences about all individuals in the population. The fourth one says, in 95% of samples from adult males in Virginia, the sample mean height will be between 67.48 and 69.52 inches. We know confidence intervals are constructed to estimate the population mean. This statement suggests that other samples collected will be almost identical to the one we initially obtained. This is not correct because we know samples vary. Now, after addressing the mistakes found in these incorrect interpretations, how can we correctly state an interpretation of a confidence interval? First, when discussing the one confidence interval we construct, we can say that we are 95% confident that the interval 67.48 to 69.52 inches captures the true population mean. This statement emphasizes the confidence and uncertainty we have in the interval we constructed, not the population mean we are trying to estimate. In addition, we should interpret our confidence interval by considering what would happen if we constructed many 95% confidence intervals. We can say that if we took many, many samples and constructed many, many confidence intervals, 95% of those confidence intervals will capture the true unknown population mean. One potentially misleading interpretation is as follows. There is a 95% chance that the population mean height is between 67.48 and 69.52 inches. This interpretation may suggest that the population mean varies. However, we know that the population mean is fixed at the center of the distribution of sample means. In practice, using this interpretation may lead to this misconception, so to be completely accurate, use the correct interpretations I just presented. Here they are again. We are 95% confident that the interval 67.48 to 69.52 inches captures the true population mean. If we took many, many samples and constructed many, many confidence intervals, 95% of those confidence intervals will capture the true unknown population mean. Pause here to compare your written interpretation to the correct and incorrect interpretations presented here to see how well you understand this idea. So far, you have learned many concepts and ideas about confidence intervals constructed to estimate the population mean mu. In the next video, we will find out what happens to the construction of a confidence interval when we do not make the unrealistic assumption of knowing the population standard deviation. Thanks for watching.